All right, everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another transfer latest. And we've got a few things to run through. It's been a little bit quiet, what with the UEFA Na Nations League, the glorified friendly league uh, still going on. So things are a little bit quiet with most players being away with the country. So I would expect things to kind of pick up quite a lot uh, at the start, after the start of the week when all the international friendlies and all that sort of stuff are done and dusted. Um, but there has been a couple of bits and bobs. First of all, we're going to jump straight into it with Aaron Wan-Bissaka, who has been widely rumoured that United were interested in him pretty much for the last six months, really, after his fantastic season for Crystal Palace, where he's kind of established himself as the best defensive fullback in the Premier League. Well, there's been some news that broke on yesterday evening, late Saturday night, uh, from Sky, so take it with a pinch of salt. They're not the most reliable these days, Sky Sports, but they were reporting that United had made a significant bid for the England under-21 international, although Crystal Palace don't really want to sell him, so it sounds as if the bid has been rejected, uh, with Aaron Wan-Bissaka still having three years left on his contract. So it looks like the first move has been made by United, and... I'd, there's not been any mention of the fee. There's been rumours that they were they, they were wanting 60 to 70 million, which is absolutely ridiculous, even given the mind-boggling prices in the market at the minute. So I, I, I can't imagine it being that much that they're, that they're hanging, out, hanging up for, really. But yet they are saying that United are wanting a right fullback. They've targeted Wan-Bissaka and we've made initial contact with Palace to secure him, but obviously there's going to be a little bit of backwards and forwards between the two clubs, and it's it's all obviously depending on whether we can match that valuation that Crystal Palace have. So, could be some more uh, more news to come on this in the next couple of days. But he's, he'd be a fantastic option to bring in a right full back. I've already highlighted him in the five right backs I think United should sign. So if you want to check that video out, I'll put a link in the top corner or something so you can go and check that out. But He's had a fantastic season, as I say, for Crystal Palace. 103 tackles attempted, which is the most by any defender in the Premier League. And he's won the most by any defender in 68. That's a fantastic tackle win percentage. Unbelievable. And I think he's been dribbled past the least of the fullbacks, which just shows that nobody can get past him this season. He's also good at his positioning and anticipation winning the second most interceptions for defenders as well and blocking the second most crosses in 26 as well. So you can't get past him and you can't get the ball past him from the wide areas either. And given our frailties at right back, having to depend on Ashley Young of all people to play the last season, surely we've got to be bringing in a right fullback this summer and he has got to be right at the top of the list. But keep an eye on this because I think it could escalate before the under-21 UEFA Europa League, whatever it is, at the end of the week, which then, which is when it starts. So I would expect some movement to be made on this, one way or another, this week. And next up, we've got the latest on Bruno Fernandes, and this is coming from Sport Witness over on Twitter, who early in the week broke the news that Tottenham had entered the race for the Portuguese midfielder, and that they were looking at him as a potential replacement for Christian Eriksen, who's obviously rumoured to be a target of Zinedine Zidane at the Bernabeu for Real Madrid, and that Tottenham had come in with a improved offer than uh, than both Manchester clubs, um, at 65 million, which is 10 million more than the 55 million that United had offered, although United did offer more in incentive bonuses as well. Um, but... They also reported a couple of days afterwards that Sporting still prefer United's offer. Even though Tottenham's is more up front, they still prefer United's offer because United's offer isn't depending on if one of the one of our players leaves, whereas Tottenham's is if if Ericsson goes, that's where you want to get in. So but it's all dependent on if Ericsson leaves. Whereas United aren't really waiting for anybody, they can come in and get that done. The only niggling thing at the minute is that it looks like Ed Woodward is a little bit hesitant to complete the signing, which if we miss out on another signing after we missed out on the likes of Perisic last year, 
and uh, sorry, two years ago, and all the VRL last year where Woodward was haggling over the fee by f £5 million. That's ridiculous. And it would just sum up his tenure as as the executive at Manchester United, if he was, to balls this up from being in such a strong position to bring in a much needed quality in that central midfield area. And he has been fantastic this season in the Premier League for Sporting Lisbon. 33 games, 20 goals and 13 assists. He's an absolute goal machine from central midfield. Well, attacking midfield because he just plays off the forwards. So he isn't really a midfielder as of such, even though people continually tell me he's a defensive midfielder, which he's not. But he's also great at, at creating... Uh, Involvement in goals as well, averaging 3.2 key passes per game and averaging three shots. So he likes to play players in, he likes to set his teammates up, he likes to create goal scoring opportunities, and he's not afraid to have a do himself. He would be ideal for Manchester United's midfield, given our reliance on Paul Pogba to create something, having somebody else in there who can actually create and can actually pick out that pass to play one of his teammates in could be absolutely vital next season for United if we were to bring him in. And you didn't think we were going to get through a transfer latest video without bringing you the latest on the Delict saga. Now, early in this week, it's been, it's been a little bit quiet on the United front this week in, in terms of Delict, but there has been news on the Delict front, as it were, with ESPN reporting early in the week that PSG had become strong favourites for Delict's signature this summer offering double the contract offer that Barcelona had offered, which is €15 million Euros per season. And that's a little bit of a worry for United because Barcelona weren't willing to weren't willing to go above their wage structure to bring De Ligt in, whereas United quite happily were, as we've seen in the past with the likes of Sanchez signing. We were happy to break our wage structure for the right player, and at least this time it would be the right player. And... But PSG don't have that qualm like Barcelona. Like Barcelona, They'll come in and just throw as much money as United were throwing. And it all comes down then to the, who the player prefers. And Guillem Balaguer has also come out this week, later on in the week, towards the end, uh, with a bit of an update as well, as, saying that De Ligt is asking for more time to weigh up the two most attractive offers. And he does mention the PSG and Barcelona offer. So it looks like those two at the minute, if you believe everything that's being said, I always take things that Guillaume Balaguer says with a pinch of salt because you might as well call him Guillaume Bullshit, to be perfectly honest at times. But it's noticeable how little United have been mentioned in the Delic saga this, this week. Given the fact how we were led to believe we were in such a strong position last week, to have no mention or next to no mention this week with him, it's a little bit... A little bit suspect, and, it, and I'm wondering whether the lack of United being mentioned, could this be a bit of a smokescreen? So that, because we know Real, Real has been touting him left and right to City, to United, to Liverpool, to Barcelona, to Bayern Munich, who've now bowed out of the race, Juventus, PSG, basically all around Europe, really. And it, you can just imagine Ed Woodward coming up with the idea of being able to announced Delict and say that we got him ahead of all of those clubs. So it wouldn't surprise me if... Well, I think it's plainly obvious that United's interest is real in Delict. I think we are still in the fight for him. But I think we... If you're led to believe the reports, we are third choice or fourth choice, maybe, for Delict. Um, or the fourth most attractive offer, I should say. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit more of a surprise in this Delict saga, because like I say, it just I've just got a feeling that United could pull the, could potentially pull this off, and what better way to do it than to say we beat the likes of Barcelona, even though we're not in the Champions League, we beat the likes of Barcelona, PSG, Bayern Munich, City, Liverpool... All those massive teams that are in the Champions League next season, but he's instead wanted to come to United for the allure of United, the 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 ethos that United have. 
it it just it just kind of rolls off the tongue as some sort of PR and press release that United would put together if that was the case. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I'm taking it with all, all with a pinch of salt at the minute because I don't think anything's going to be decided with the Ligt until after this Sunday's UEFA Nations League. But again, this one could be one that rumbles on all summer, which is not ideal for United, really, when you think about it. And obviously, the last one is Dan James, who we've already announced has signed for United, all but made official um, yesterday with United announcing it on Twitter, uh, along with several other n media outlets. And there's been some absolute nonsense I've seen on on. Twitter regarding the fee, uh, the wages that we were supposedly paying him, going from four thousand at Swansea to sixty five thousand per week, which being reported by I think it was the Times or the Telegraph, one of the broadsheets anyway, and just plucky numbers from absolutely nowhere, which is ridiculous. If you don't believe into it whatsoever, because there's no way that they will know how much they're being paid. They're probably the same people who were saying that Rashford was asking for 300 grand a week, which is absolute nonsense. So, but excellent to have Dan James in, but don't believe all the stuff you read regarding his wages on Twitter. So those are the ins, and as far as the outs, there's really not that much to uh, to report, if I'm being honest. The main outs really has been the released players, which was made official yesterday, with a pretty hefty list of United's uh, more, more youngsters than anything else. But obviously the main two were Ander Herrera and Antonio Valencia, and neither of which have actually got new clubs as of yet, but that could be waiting for the international transfer window, which opens on the 11th of June, which obviously we'll know more this week whether uh, Herrera takes up that offer of PSG. Uh, but the noticeable, most noticeable youngsters that have been released, uh, James Wilson, who I've already talked about, that it's a real shame because he was so, so promising coming through United's ranks that um, it's sad to see that he hasn't been able to not just succeed at United, but no other club has really come for him either. So I hope he can find somewhere where he fits in, even if he has to take a step down the ladder or two, um, because there is a st there's still a quality player in there, even though he has had injury worries in the past. And the other one is Callum Gribbin, who... <sighs> There's a, I think there's a lot of stuff going on in the background with Callum Gribbin. He's obviously not played football. I think it might even be 12 months now since he's played football for United. And there was something came out on Twitter. I don't know who it came out from. Uh, I don't know if it was official source or whatnot, saying that Callum Gribbin is now not looking for a future in football. He's pretty much given up, hung up his boots, which is a real, real shame because, again, another really potential, uh, potentially fantastic young player and I don't know if it's been a mentality issue or there's been things off the pitch that I'm not we're not privy to uh, but it's obviously something's gone on um, and it's just a shame really to see that a, a player that had such promise coming through the under 18s and under 16s has just has, has, has just lost fell out of love with the game by all accounts and uh yeah, I mean, I hope he finds happiness in whatever sort of avenue he goes down in life, but it's just a shame that we won't see him as a professional footballer. That's the latest transfer news. Like I said, there's a, it's a little bit quiet, what with the majority of players being away with their international teams, be it in the glorified friendly league or the uh, Euro 2020 qualifiers or off with their uh, under-21 teams getting ready for that. Uh, that... Um, European Championships, under-21 European Championships, which starts next weekend. So I don't know if it's going to be a little bit more quiet um, regarding the youngsters at least, but I think as far as the senior players, once this batch of international games is out of the way, which I think they're all done by Tuesday or Wednesday, I would expect then the transfer news to kind of ramp up quite a bit as we get towards the pre-season friendly, uh, uh, sorry, pre-season tour, and everybody coming back for pre-season training. So worthwhile to keep an eye out. I'll be back as always if there is any breaking news as well. So keep it locked to the channel. If you've enjoyed this, bang a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. And I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>